Hi guys, welcome back. All right, let's get started. First, I'm gonna take some of my barrier spray and I'm going to give a light spritz all over the place. Be careful, it really smells bad of alcohol. Next, we're gonna get some of my latex, uh, liquid latex that is uh, color foundation. Great for the face. Um, it really works well because you don't have to put a foundation over the latex when you're done. So I'm just blotting um, where I want my uh, first layer of tissue to go. Get a good layer on there. Careful not to get this on your lips because uh, that shit hurts when it comes off. Get down your neck. It's pretty much wherever you want that to go, put a nice light layer of latex on. Get one ply piece of tissue paper. It has to be one ply. And lay that over. Now, I do not suggest doing this if you are any type of claustrophobic or, you know, don't like things over your face because uh, I don't mind it and this kind of gave me a little anxiety. It's um, it's a strange feeling. All right, so just rip off the extra parts of tissue paper. Okay, and then we're just going to start starting from the edges, start stippling on some of that latex over to seal um, it on there and don't cover your nose holes. You got to breathe for a little bit out of somewhere. So I'll just go all the way around. There's no talking now. Your mouth is sealed. All right, just go all the way down your neck. Now make sure you move your neck around too so that it's not so tight. All right, I'm gonna start to speed this up now. Put a little hole in there because I was starting to panic a little bit. All right, so yes, relax, deep breaths, relax. I had a burp and I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? <laughs> it's not very comfortable. All right, so now we're gonna go over the nose. We want there to be a rip from the top of the nose all the way down to the neck but you have to do this in two different parts or else um you really will start to panic because you can't breathe at all so I suggest doing this in two parts like this so right now I'm only breathing on that little tiny hole in my mouth I'm trying to go as fast as I can because there we go now watch putting this near your eyes <laughs> The, straw, the smell of latex is extremely potent. Don't get this anywhere near your eyebrows, your eyelashes, or you will no longer have any. Cover it all up. Make sure it's a thin layer. Speed up the process, get some fresh air. 
We want that to dry, but still be tacky. All right, now we're going to cover a huge area from our nose all the way down so that we can get a good um, like veil of skin that we can rip to all together after this is done. It gives it that really good effect that it's just one big piece of... Ooh, let's, hmm, let's make some holes here to breathe. We need to breathe. Let's not forget to breathe. You start to get used to this after a while. It's just very, like, unnerving in the beginning because you start to, like, panic. <laughs> Which is natural, I'm assuming. But So we want to fold this. We don't want to make it straight. We want to have some folds in there so it looks like skin. And another layer of latex. I went a little bit thicker on my neck because I want to create like a um, kind of like a sunken trachea when I'm done with this and I need to have some depth there. All right, so just go over this whole thing again one more time with latex, seal it all down. Yes, going over the mouth is not fun, but I figured why not go all the way. Okay, so let's start ripping. Begin in that little hole that I made in the mouth. And a little bit at a time. Do not go quick with this because if you rip it or tear it the wrong way, you all that work you just did it was for nothing. So you really want to just do a little bit at a time. Don't go gung-ho. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel great. I'm not going to lie. Definitely a lot stronger than like those um, charcoal masks that's supposed to pull out all the funk in your face. It's it's definitely a stronger, <laughs> a stronger, uh, what do you want to call that? I don't know. But you know what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to go all the way up my nose because I want to really keep a good anchor at the top and the bottom. Don't make a straight slit down. Give it some like texture. You know, you want some folds in there and, and some kind of wrinkles so it looks like actual skin kind of just like blew up and blew off and split, split down your face. Remember, the more it is gross, the more freaky and disgusting it'll look like. Okay. Now, you really want to get some, like, loose powder and really get it all over because or else it's just going to stick to itself while, like, you're trying to paint it and everything. So really do a really good dusting of some baby powder or translucent powder. Because once this latex sticks to itself, it's really hard to make it Go back to how it was. It'll start to roll and that would suck. My back at this point is hurting. I sped this video, you know, sped and cut some parts out so it wasn't so long, but. So now I'm going for the cheaper type latex to do like, I want to make another, um, another layer of latex underneath the flap that I just made in my neck because we're going to build up under there as well and we want to make it look like there's some gross dead skin and everything so I'm going to go all again underneath where we just ripped we're going to put, put a whole new layer so same thing we're just going to kind of stick it underneath and then cover it with more latex thin layer all right next I'm going to get some cotton balls and you're going to see I'm going to start to put it I'm going to try to make like a faux bottom lip and top lip out of this cotton so this is where I hate using cotton and latex but you really get a good um like underneath layer to start building upon that gives it some more like um, depth not so flat like you can with the tissue paper so ho 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 all 
So just do the best you can with this part. It's, it's kind of tricky and sticky and a mess and annoying. But So then I roll like just a piece of like tissue paper and some cotton and I'm trying to make like a what looks like a windpipe or you know a trachea where it looks like there's the ridges in your uh, in your trachea. So just put them along your neck. I did three because I, th I thought that was enough. So just roll it like a little snake. It's kind of tough, but you'll get it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You, you get you'll get the idea, and you, and you can make it look even better with the with the paint. Here we go. Wipe off your hands. Look at yourself because you look ridiculous. Yeah, and we're going to go over this whole thing with more latex. So it doesn't look like a blob of cotton and stuff. You start getting high off of these fumes. I'm like, oh my god, I'm telling you. Just try to relax, breathe slow. All right, now full piece of tissue over this whole thing again. So that we can cover it with one more layer of latex. Just so we can seal in that cotton so it's not gonna just like fall apart. Real thin. Trying to get too much through there on your lips. It's going to be hard, but just do your best. And I'm almost done with that. A little bit more. Then we're going to move on to our next step, which is scar wax. Now I make my own scar wax. It's just pretty much Vaseline and cornstarch and some foundation. Um, scar wax you can buy on... Um, Alright. It's expensive. So just roll this out with a snake. Like blob, you know, roll. And you're just going to put it on your face. And you're going to smooth it out as thin as you can so it almost blends in with your actual skin. But make sure you leave a nice ridge so that we can make a huge slash or a scar. So just kind of work your fingers, go in and then try to get a really thin layer so it blends in. Like I said, you can buy this on Amazon, but it's ridiculously expensive and there's a bunch of other places. I mean, YouTube videos that say you can make it out of flour, but I thought using um, cornstarch, that's the pastry chef in me, it made such a better a better scar wax. I was happy with the way it came out. Okay, next. I'm gonna get like my little um, spatula. There it is. It looks like a scalpel. And slice that very carefully all the way down. And then kind of go in between and kind of open it up like a gaping wound. Be very gentle with this. And if you make a mistake, just roll it up and do it again. You can do some really gnarly stuff with this. It's pretty cool. Right, just smooth it down as much as you can. I just covered that up with some latex and now we're going to make teeth. So I took these applicators and I just kind of pulled them off and um, we're just going to put some latex over that piece of cotton that we did and just attach these. Some people use like false nails to make teeth but I wanted to do something a little bit easier I thought. Well I thought it would be easy to attach these. It actually was a royal pain but we got it on with some patience. So these are going to look like our like skeleton nasty teeth. 
the ones that were left <laughs> from the explosion. So just dip those in some latex and hold them on for a little bit because they are they don't stay very well, but this is where the more patience comes in. I only did, I think I did like three or four on top and a couple on the bottom. There we go. Rawr. All right, let's get cooking with some paints. So we're using our bruise wheels, some black snazaru water paints, and our alcohol-based um, palette. And we're gonna start with our black to get the depth going. Go underneath those skin flaps. Plop, plop, plop. We're gonna go in between each one of those trachea uh, bumps. So it looks like you actually have shadows underneath and behind them. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Remember, you want to work mostly with black, dark reds, bright reds, purples, yellows, greens. Those are going to be the colors in your wheelhouse for this whole thing. So you just kind of go with it. I, I, when it comes to painting, like I have an idea in my head, but like you just, once you start, you just kind of, you know, see how it goes. If I were to do this three more times, each time would probably look really different. But that's just me. That's how I paint. I kind of just, whatever happens, happens. All right, we're just gonna start with the reds. You wanna go, wanna go real liberal with the red. You want it to look, you want it to look light in some areas, bright in some areas, and really dark in other areas. So I'm using my alcohol-based paints. I mean, sorry, alcohol-activated paint. And I'm starting off with a with a very like um, thin layer, and then I'm gonna um, dilute each of the reds and kind of go over those again and then I'm going to use way less alcohol so I get a really thick opaque red and you'll see like when I do my nose that is hardly any alcohol just really thick um, alcohol paint and let me tell you this part was hard to get off my nose because I didn't really have any latex on my nose so um, my suggestion is put a barrier of latex uh, where if you're going to use like really dark uh, alcohol based paint because it kind of it's hard to get off and so you're just going to keep working it work it work it get those skin flaps work it use your hands get in there you want it to look dirty this bitch got blown up She's having a rough day. Happy 4th of July, by the way. I figured this would be a perfect day to, you know, get your face blown off. It's 4th of July. Alright, see, look how dark that looks on your nose. Ugh, it just looks raw. Kind of like a murderous clown right now. <laughs> When my husband and my kids saw this, they were they had no idea what I was doing. And I came out and they were like, what the? My, my son actually got like really scared. <laughs> I don't think he knew it was me right away. I felt kind of bad. <laughs> but, you know, come on. He knows his mom's nuts. But after a while, he's like, whoa, that's pretty cool. And my husband set off fireworks afterwards, and I was just sitting in the driveway <laughs> looking like this for like 45 minutes. 
Anyways, just get some of that paint inside of that wound. Be very careful with your paintbrush because you don't want to rip it off. You just keep building it up. Try to get as much as the uh, latex covered up as you can. You don't want to kind of, you know, see all that white um, and that cream color. Like, it, you, it, it'll look obvious that you know, it's something else. But you want to leave some of that white on the teeth. But not too much. Smear it around. Make it look like there's kind of like a road rash type like uh, effect around it. But don't forget, now I'm going to have a veil on. So I'm not going to even bother doing my whole face. Because I know that it's, it's going to be kind of covered. So do some and then kind of look at look at yourself, step back if you have to, and uh, just keep layering on the colors. I got some green and yellow going on just so it looks like... Uh, you know, more gross and like skin and bruise and funk and flesh and bleh. Nasty. Get in between those teeth. Those teethers, those toothers make them gross. And we're almost done here, guys. I did get my um, white out contacts just to make it look even more creepier. Um, if you want to make it look like prettier, you can put some fake eyelashes on and get some like pretty contacts or, you know, really make your uh, dramatic makeup. But I just kind of wanted to go more of like a dead creepy than like pretty bride that just had an accident. Okay, we're done. Woohoo!